you're very used to dealing with a number line that starts at zero and goes on up from there. And all those ideas, as you move that way, your numbers get bigger and bigger. And as you move to the left, the numbers get smaller and smaller. Now we can take exactly those ideas and extend our number line to include negative numbers. And everything will work just the same. As we move in this direction, our numbers are getting bigger. And as we move in this direction to the left, our numbers are getting smaller. So, for example, if we go and compare negative 7 with, say, negative 2, let's have a look at where they are. Well, negative 2 is there, negative 7 is there. Which one of them is smaller? Well, the one that's further to the left is the smaller number. So we can say negative 7 is smaller than negative 2. Doing addition and subtraction on the number line is going to work exactly the same way as it always has. So let's go back to kind of work you would have done in grade 1. What is 4 minus 3? Well, if I start at 4 and I subtract 3, in other words, I have to go 3 steps back, I will end up at 1. And what happens if I take 5? plus 2. Well, that means I start at 5 and I'm adding, so I must move to the right. I'm going up by 2 steps and I'll end up at 7. Those exact simple grade 1 ideas are going to work once we get to negative numbers. Let's have a look at something like this. If we say 3 minus 8, well, we know that that means that we need to start off at 3 and we're subtracting. In other words, we must move to the left, so we must move 8 steps down. And once we've taken 8 steps backwards, we're going to end up at negative 5. So if we're at 3, and we subtract off 8, we're going to end up at negative 5. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. Similarly, we can ask ourselves, what's negative 2 plus 3? Same way as we've always done, we say, well, we start at negative 2. We want to add on 3. In other words, we must move up by 3 steps. And we're going to end up at 1. OK, I want you to try some for yourself now. Open your homework books. These questions are there and there's a number line to help you. Pause the video now and try them out, all three of them. OK, let's see how we did. All right, the first one, we start at negative 4 and we have to take one step backwards because we are subtracting one, so we'll end up at negative 5. The next one, 7. We start at, got to take two steps backwards, and we'll end up at 5. And that shouldn't surprise you, right? 7 minus 2, you've known since grade 1, is 5. 7, two steps backward, gets you to 5. What about 2 minus 7? Well, we start at 2, and we must take 7 steps back. And we see we end up there at negative 5. OK, we can play around with it in slightly different ways. Let's have a look and see how we done to this one. We want to know 3 plus what will get you to 8. In other words, we want to picture we're over here on the number line at 3. And we want to end up at 8. And the question is, what must we do to get from 3 to 8? Well, hopefully, that's very easy for you to see. To get from 3 to 8, you've got to take five steps upwards. In other words, you've got to add on five. We can do just the same idea with negative numbers. If we want to know negative four 
plus what gets me to 5? Well, what we've got is I'm starting at negative 4 and I've got to add on something and I've got to end up at 5. In other words, I've got to get negative 4 all the way to 5. How do I get from negative 4 to 5? Well, I can see quite easily I've got to add on 4 steps and another 5 steps. In other words, I've got to go up by 9 steps in order to get from negative 4 to 5. Okay, obviously, we're not in every case going to have small numbers that we're trying to deal with and a number line where we can actually literally figure, go and count every little thing. But we can use these same ideas. Um, so let's just say, for example, we're given something like 12 subtract 18. Now it's going to actually take us a really long time if we're going to go and draw out the number line, put everything on it, and then walk 18 steps back. But if we just use our ideas that we've already been dealing with, what I like to do is just quickly draw a rough number line. So here's the number line, and all I'm going to mark on here, because it's the important thing, is zero. Now, I then look at what I'm being asked to do. I'm being asked to start at 12 and subtract 18, so go 18 steps back. So I start at 12. Now, I'm not going to try and be accurate. I'm just going to say, look, 12 is somewhere here above the zero. What am I being asked to do? I'm being asked to move backwards 18 steps. And the question is, where will I end up? And I'm going to use jumping to zero as my way of getting here. So I've got to go from here at the 12, I've got to go 18 steps back. Well, if I jump back to zero, I've gone 12 steps back. But that wasn't the total. I was meant to go 18 steps back. So I've got to go another six steps back. And if I go from zero, six steps back, can you see I will end up at negative six. So 12 minus 18 is negative six. So now I want you to try one for yourself. So see what you can do with 17 minus 25. Pause the video and try it using a number line now. Okay, let's go through it together. So you just sketch a rough number line, right? We're not even going to try to be accurate here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my zero. Then I'm going to say, okay, 17 is somewhere here above zero. And I want to go back by 25 steps. Where will I end up? Well, I'm going to go 17, jump back to zero. So I've gone 17 steps back. Um, but I didn't need to go 17, I wanted to go 25. So how many more have I left to do? Well, it's um, 25 minus 17 gives me 8. So I've got another 8 steps to do, right, to get to the 25 steps back. So I've got to go 8 steps back. And if I was at 0 and I go 8 steps down, obviously I end up at negative 8. And we can use the same basic idea if we're given something like this, negative 13 plus 34. So I'm just going to do my rough number line. There's where 0 is. Negative 13, which is where I have to start, is down here. And in this case, I'm adding 34. So I'm going up, right? So I have to go up by 34 steps. So I'm going to jump to 0. And I've done 13 of the 34 steps. So I still have got another 21 steps to go, right? Um, I've done 13 out of the 34, so I've got another 21 to go. So I must take another 21 steps up. If I'm at 0, take 21 steps up, I end up at 21. And so I have my answer.